Welcome everybody to the Chomp Cast, the official podcast of Sword Chomp and SwordChomp.com. Thank you for downloading or streaming our show, taking some time out of your busy life to listen to us. And remember, if you're digging the show, please subscribe, leave us a kind rating, share it with your friends, whatever it takes to get the uh, Chomp Cast name out there. We have a, a devilishly good show today as we discuss The Evil Within 2, uh, a bit more Cuphead. Uh, Josh has been playing some Hollow Knight. Um, and in our bio break portion of the show, we have a cool article about why human beings are afraid of spiders and snakes from birth. Uh, it's really interesting because uh, it kind of goes against what people had had sort of thought before, um, as well as the topic of the show, uh, which is fixing fighting games or how to infuse more excitement into the genre from all of our perspectives. So even if you're not really into fighting games out there, trust me, it's going to be a, a really fun discussion. Um, because we have a very special guest today that brought that topic forward. But before I introduce our very special guest, (laughs) we'll build up the anticipation there. Let's just uh, quickly get to the uh, crew you're familiar with, the crew you know and love. Um, (laughs) There's an evil within this one. Joshua Fowler is here from Michigan. How are you doing, Josh? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That's a beautiful... you, You got a really natural... Uh, cackle, Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It uh, I, the vocal lessons is really. I mean, if you specifically ask them to focus on your evil laugh, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's amazing what you can accomplish. Um, which is mm. you know, just a little bit of coaching. Um, <laughs> see, see, I was gonna say I was gonna give you credit and say that it was just natural, but now I know it's coaching. I'm slightly mm-hmm. less impressed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, but, I did but kill him Josh... afterwards instead of paying. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, I mean, that's fed. Okay, whew, we're close. That was close. All right. Uh, just... Glad you're here today, Josh. Um, from Japan, our resident biologist, uh, Shay Layton. How are you doing, Shay? I'm good. And I hope you bite into the steel bite and feel into... the chomp cast. Means. Oh, okay. Bite into the steel. <laughs> I just want, I wanted Josh's head shake early on. I wanted to get that out of the way. Uh-huh. Uh, that's the sad part is I'm staring at my notes for the show and I, I didn't even see his disappointed head shake. It turned into a face palm head shake. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. I leveled up. It's a combination face palm slash disappointed head shake. I like it. Mm. I'm glad you're here today, Shay. Um, biting into the steel, as they say. So. Hopefully it's not a metaphor for something else. Um, no. And if it is, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love you either way. Um, and of course, from Texas, uh, our next co-host, along with kind of today's theme of the show with the evil within, um, true story. Uh, true story. Our next co-host faked a demonic possession. That's right. He, fa- he faked being possessed by a demon for several weeks just so his friends and family would call a local priest over to his home. So the priest could tie him up to his bed and slap him around. Fetishes are not quite as cheap as they used to be. Anthony Fisher is here. How you doing, Fish? <laughs> doing pretty good. Pretty good. That was your best intro ever. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to admit that. It's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I like it. Jinx it. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I think it's pretty clever, Fish, honestly. You're finding a way to save money in these tough economic times. Uh-huh. Of course, yeah. I'm a man, I'm man about God and also getting my rocks off with him. <laughs> it's, what, can you in, maybe elaborate on the whole man of God thing? Why that's, a, <laughs> why that's part of your fetish? Huh. <laughs> Oh you no! Walked yourself right oh. into that. Yeah, I <laughs> did. <laughs> I did. I, I have to walk back huh. out of this one. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> He just started saying things, and then they were said, and there was nothing he could do about it. Ha. Uh, uh, all right. Well, you know, we still love you, and uh, I, for one, think it was, it was rather brilliant. Um, we are glad Fish is here today, and of course, our special guest listening to all this strangeness take place before we can introduce him is Tony from the No Time for Time Travel podcast. How you doing, Tony? Good, good. It was so hard for me to resist saying anything while you guys were talking. <laughs> uh, it, it always is. It's like 
That's always weird. You, you can, any, any thoughts on that? I mean, anything at all? You, it's, it's fine if you want to. Oh, no. I mean, like, I always enjoy that intro that you guys do all the time with your uh, every episode. So it's, uh, it's a long intro, but it's always entertaining. <laughs> 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 that is the aim there, and uh, you know we're we're glad you're here today because you had a a really cool topic about uh, fighting games that we're gonna get to here in a second, um, which is kind of out of the norm for us. So, um, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit about the podcast you do. We're checking out as well uh, toward the end of the show and uh, where people can find it. So, awesome. Uh, but yeah, we are glad you are here, our special guest this week. And of course, I am Morgan <laughs> Barnes. <laughs> general mountain time from montana and let's just get right to the topic of the show i always let the guests introduce it tony uh you're here and you want to talk about fighting games uh to a degree but i will let you set this off in your own words whenever we brought you know the idea of doing a topic for the show to you um what did you come up with and why well i just had the topic of fighting games i didn't actually really have a specific on it so uh Mm -hmm. yeah fighting games (laughs) But just fighting games. That's that's rather broad. Well, why fighting games? I mean, like, is are they near and dear to your heart, or what's what's the the idea there? Oh, okay. So yeah. So for me, I'm like one of those people that don't have like a lot of patience, and um, mm-hmm. you know, playing RPGs that take like forty to eighty hours, like I can't get through them because um, I lose uh attention all the time. So mm-hmm. one of the things that I always was interested in was fighting games because they're like. You know, if I'm coming home and I have like 10 minute gap, I could go into a fighting game and then play a few rounds and then continue on with my day. Um, And the other thing is that it's one of those things where it's not really like um, a team effort. Like, don't get me wrong. I love teams and everything, but it's um, it's kind of like for me, I like watching tennis because it's like seeing people one on one and each person has their own skill set and then just seeing how well they do and um, how much they train and everything. So fighting games to me are kind of like the same way in which you're not like um, doing like a whole team thing. It's more of like all on you and this is all your skill set, how much you train yourself. So, you know, that, that's, yeah. you know, that's why I really like fighting games as a genre. Yeah, yeah, I think that's cool. I mean, honestly, that's that's a good point. A lot of, a lot of team sports will frustrate people because you know your let's say you're an NFL fan, your quarterback throws five touchdowns, but your kicker misses a field goal, and your team loses because it's a team sport. And there's so many people that you know you have to rely upon. Where like uh, like you're saying, tennis or fighting games or any sort of solo sport, really, it's just you and the other competition. And there's a very sort of like uh, primal level of of competition there that's fun. Well, and it, so we kind of morphed your topic into. Because we're not super, in, which is interesting, Tony. We're actually not really into fighting games that heavily here, mm-hmm. um, but we like to approach those topics in a, uh, a fun way, a fun challenge. So we start thinking, like Shay mentioned to you, I know earlier in the week, what would we like to do to the fighting game genre to maybe make it more interesting? And you can chime in on that as well, of course. If there's something you'd like to see, maybe that you feel is not there or you're unsatisfied with, um, I I guess if I had to sort of break the ice here for me. I can take I can take you guys all the way back. Okay, there was a game that came out for the the Xbox. Okay, and it was not a good game. It was not received very well. It was called Tail Fang Fists of the Lotus. Do you remember that game, Tony? Man, I was a uh, right when you said Xbox. I'm like, is this gonna be Tail Fang? <laughs> yeah, oh, you knew it. Okay, okay. And um, it wasn't received well, but I really liked what they were going for in that game. It was this idea where you would, like, damage specific body parts that would change the battle. So, like, if you smash their arm against something, they would their their arm would be, like, broken or disabled, and then that would change how they were able to tackle the rest of the fight. Um, and I always thought that was, like, a really cool idea that never really got pushed far enough in interesting ways because, unfortunately, if there's a game that comes out, even if it has a really cool idea, if it's unsuccessful or kind of shat upon by critics, sometimes those ideas just die out. And a lot of what we see in the fighting game genre right now is pretty stagnant and familiar. But I just thought it was a cool idea that you're sitting there and you're, you know, uh, in this very intense one-on-one competition. And everything that happens to you over the course of the battle changes how it unfolds. If they break your leg or your arm or they punch you in the face, maybe it kind of impairs. Maybe if you get punched in the face, your controls are kind of fucked up for a few seconds. You know what I mean? Because your character would be like that idea could be pushed in such interesting ways and that's the one thing i would love to see implemented more in like a, a modern fighting game um so that's hmm. the first thing i thought of 
when you said that. Uh, do you remember? So uh, how do you feel about that, Tony? I mean, you sounds like you kind of remember Teo Fang a little bit, or at least you knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, um, I I actually like that mechanic a lot. Um, interesting thing is that uh, Teo Fang is um, a creation of the studio uh, Gigante or Gigante. I actually don't know how to pronounce mm. it. Um, and that is actually uh, created by or started by John Tobias. And John Tobias mm-hmm. was um, one of the co-creators of Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Yeah. yeah. So um, they always had like very innovative um, ideas. And that was one of the things that, you know, I, I also really agreed with you is that it would be really great to incorporate into like um, the fighting game mechanic and have more people popularize that. But, you know, unfortunately, it didn't really have good sales and, um, you know, money talks. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'd like to see more of that. How, how about you, Fish? When we uh, start throwing this topic around, what, what did you think? Mm, well, I thought about why I don't like video games. That, or why I don't like Oh, yeah. Video games. Wrong podcast, Fish. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, why I love video You meant to come over to my gas station philosophy podcast. That's on uh, two hours. Oh, okay. Shit. I'm two hours behind here. Or forward. Whichever. Oh. Anyways, no. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> Sergeant Mountain Time over there. Okay, go ahead, Fish. Uh, continue. Yeah. Um, yeah, my disdain for video games goes all the way back God to. God damn like, it. God damn it. <laughs> did I say that? Yes, I'm damn. just not in the mood. Oh, okay, the truth has ah, come out. Oh Wake God. up, Fish. Wake I'm... up. Slap him around like the priest. Just slap him around. This is like an alternate oh, reality. Oh, or something. No, stop, fish. Oh, this exactly. Oh, this is somebody get a paper towel. Oh my god, fish. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay. Destiny has corrupted your soul. Destiny has rotted has. his brain. <laughs> Everything has right now, um, including this podcast. No, okay. um, <laughs> fighting, <laughs> fighting <Please> games. <laughs> low blow there. Okay, fighting, fighting games. games. Yeah. yeah, the topic of the okay. show: fighting games. Well. You know what? The hard thing about jumping into a fighting game these days, and um, this is across the board for me at least, is it, you, there's always that like ramp up of skill as far as like learning the characters and mm. learning their moves and what moves uh, translate well for you as far as um, fighting in those games because each character has their own style, they have their own moves, but a lot of times you don't know those moves and it's not very apparent how to do them. Like, like the only thing, the only reason I remember like reuse Hadouken is because I used them always in street fighter. And like, uh, I just remember that pattern on the controller to throw a Hadouken out there or, you know, um, uh, uh, uppercut. And you were a kid, so a lot more time. Yeah. To, and when you were a kid, you have little guides and all the time in the world to learn that shit. You're right. The learning curve on fighting games is really high. Yeah, it, it pretty much, and I, I just wish it was a little bit more accessible in that in that regard, as far as um, making it more intuitive. And I was thinking about like what games out there that are 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 difficult to master, but a little bit more intuitive as far as like the controls. Mm-hmm. And like I was thinking of uh, Skate, where your you would control your skateboard with um essentially it joystick you you would yeah with the joysticks you would kind of like mimic the way the the skateboard would uh flip around uh, underneath your feet for your character and mm-hmm. i i thought that was pretty a pretty cool thing that they they came out with and um i forget how many skate they, games well they made skateboarding out, but... fun which was I mean, however you feel about those games, they actually made the act of skateboarding kind of fun for a while. And yeah, it, it was interesting. I mean, I never yeah. got into it deeply, but uh, I played a demo of it, and it just it 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 was actually really cool. It felt like you were actually mastering tricks on a skateboard in a video mm-hmm. game, which I thought was cool. But um, yeah, I th- I was thinking of that and.